A man suspected of carrying out two mass shootings in the U.S. state of Maine is still at large. At least 18 people were killed and 13 others were injured in the city of Lewiston. Police have urged people to stay indoors as they undertake a door-to-door -door search. John Hendren reports. After one of the worst mass shootings in U.S. history, Maine police have launched a manhunt for a gunman on the run. The FBI and police are searching for the man who opened fire inside a bar and a bowling alley that was hosting a youth night in the town of Lewiston. This man is waiting for word of his son, who was working at Shemengi's bar during the shooting. And I know he's dead. I know it as well as I know. I'm standing here telling you because he's not here and he's not at any other hospital and he's not running the streets. So he would have called us because he manages Shemengi's. So I know he was there. Police say the man they're looking for, 40-year-old Robert Card, is armed and dangerous. His car was found abandoned in a nearby town. Card is considered armed and dangerous. He is a person of interest, however, and that's what we'll uh, label him at uh, moving forward until that changes. If people see him, they should not approach Card or make contact with him in any way. Card is a trained firearms instructor in the Army Reserves, according to the Maine Information and Analysis Center. He recently suffered from mental health issues, the center says, hearing voices, threatening to attack his National Guard base, and he was committed to a mental health facility for two weeks earlier this year. Armed guards man a hospital treating victims. Families gather in nearby Auburn, awaiting news of their loved ones. A significant amount of shock going on with people that were actually witnesses. Obviously, when I was bringing people in that were looking for their loved ones, there's fear, there's panic. Of course, there's worry, understandable. Local schools and a college are locked down. Residents ordered to stay home. A hauntingly familiar scene after another mass shooting in America. John Hendren, Al Jazeera. Okay, let's go to Mike Hanna, who's covering developments from Washington, D.C. Mike, I understand there's been a press conference given by the governor Yes, indeed, and the governor is saying that the situation remains fluid, that the man who is wanted still remains on the run. So these are points of major concern. The exact uh, fatality number fixed at the moment at 18. However, once again, this is a fluid factor. A number of people still receiving treatment in hospitals, some, it is said, in grave condition. Uh, the exact amount of injured, once again, still unknown, but it is believed to be over 60 at this particular point. This is the worst shooting in the state in history. It is one in which there is a low level of violence traditionally. In uh, last year, for example, there were only 29 violence-related deaths throughout the entire state of Maine. So this particular action has come as a major shock to the people of Maine, a state in which uh, there are very lax gun laws. The reason for this is that Maine is renowned as a hunting state, a shooting state, and certainly the uh, degree of uh, gun ownership is exceedingly high. But as I said, this does not correlate to incidents of gun violence. This is a very rare and indeed the worst exception to that. Now, they also say, the authorities, that it's believed that the suspect might have crossed the state line into Massachusetts. Uh, the search for him is continuing. And even in far-flung New York State, for example, uh, police there have been put on alert for anybody meeting uh, his description. Uh, Mike, obviously, as you say, this is a significant um, event for Maine, but once again, of course, the U.S. facing a large number of people killed in a shooting is bound to reopen the debate over a gun ownership. It will open the debate, and it will open the debate over what sort of weapons are available to the general public. Now, the Facebook pictures the police put up of this wanted man uh, show that he was using a long-barreled weapon, looked like an AR-15, uh, so it had as well a telescopic sight mounted to the top. Now, these are very sophisticated weapons, particularly in the hands of what we believe to be a trained firearms instructor. So this has once again will raise the level of the debate. And one must mention as well, in this year alone, there have been 36 incidents of mass killings in the United States as a whole. This is a massive number. That's a figure quoted by the Associated Press. But it's just an indication of how prevalent 
uh, gun violence is within the United States. There is incident after incident. The debate begins again of not only how to what degree weapons should be restricted, but what kind of weapons are available to the public. There was in the past a U.S. a complete ban on automatic weapons. Uh, this was rescinded after a decade. But now it's uh, not in place again. There is argument for such a ban to be instituted, but that has gone nowhere in Congress, and generally it appears to have gone nowhere in the public as a whole. Mike Hanna in Washington, D.C. Mike, thank you very much indeed.